Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Thing Is. Today I have with me Kripa. Hey. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Oh, likewise. Thank uh, you so much yeah. for having me. Oh, no problem at all. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this podcast is all about relationships. But today's going to be a little bit different. So although it's going to be about relationships, today we're going to talk about how children affect relationships. They affect it massively. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing or what. Some people feel that... If they are having problems in a relationship, it can be a good thing to have children. And sometimes they can bring people together. Now you're joined to this person. So you must make it work. Mm-hmm. Do you think, you, first of all, do you have children? Yes, two. You have two? Back to back. <laughs> I think we forgot the consequences of, you know what? Uh-huh, you're right. So <laughs> <laughs> we had the, the six-week permission mm-hmm. and then I had a C-section with my first and then, what? yeah, Zaven happened. Right, so, so how, how close? Zaven. How close are 11 they? months. Oh, you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> 11 months. Oh, my God. The shop is definitely closed now, though. It's, the shop is oh, closed. Oh, it's closed. It's We've closed. retired. The padlock is on the door. Oh, oh, the keys. Gone. I don't know where they Gone. are. Gone. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Some people feel that children can either bring you closer together or perhaps tear you apart. What do you think about that? Do you know what? Sometimes I do wonder how those people that... Um, thought that having a child would bring their relationship together. Mm. Uh, like, I just don't understand that because mm. I've seen that actually just Zuri alone, forget mm. like having Zaven, just Zuri alone impacted our relationship massively. Really? Like our priorities were just mm. placed elsewhere. And I, I couldn't understand or, s- how do I put this? I couldn't understand my husband mm-hmm. with his priorities put the ways the way that it was does that make right. sense because mm-hmm. all of a sudden all the attention that I was getting from my husband was now on Zari and I was like mm. where is my man yeah. <laughs> where did he go <laughs> and who is this new girl right. trying it you know no but that sounds like a good thing it sounds like he was active because I mm. actually thought you were gonna say something along the lines of you felt the burden of having all the children yourself but he sounds like he was active. Yeah, no, he's so active and present with the kids. That's um, good. That's yeah, amazing. No, it is a good thing. But then mm. it's like, obviously, our, our priorities, like I said, shifted from mm. us mm-hmm. to now giving our love and our attention to this girl. And by the end of mm-hmm. all of that, it's like we kind of forget that <laughs> we exist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so that happened for a few months. And then it was like, okay we really need to talk about this because Mm. I miss you, you know? Mm. Oh, Um, that's so sweet. Yeah, (laughs) that's one and two softy. But yeah, that's what Mm. I saw happen in our relationship. So now I'm thinking, how do those people that Mm. have children to now repair their marriage or their relationship or whatever Mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. I'm like, how do they do that? Because like, how does that even make sense? Mm. You know? Mm. Um, But yeah. Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. But... People still do. I guess because you feel like perhaps you're then attached to the person. That person can almost never leave. I mean, we know they can, but they're less likely to leave because they have a child with you. And so Mm. maybe you'll find a way to make it work. You Mm. know, maybe it's that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. I'm not a great (laughs) believer in that, to be honest with you. I don't know a relationship that's done that. That's like in a healthy position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Yeah. So. During my separation that I'm going through at the moment, Mm -hmm. a lot of people have said to me, you need to go back to your husband for the sake of the children. Mm, I've heard that that. so many (coughs) times. And I sit back and I just think, to me, that sounds absolutely crazy. What do you think about something like that? Just give me your raw thoughts. Don't think about my feelings. Give it it to me raw. (laughs) Yeah. What do you think? I just think that I feel sorry for the kids. No, as in not your kids. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. In like just the kids in a situation like that. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, that's just going to breed tension, no? Right, like right. Like having, being, because obviously you made an informed decision of leaving your husband. Because mm-hmm. from what I hear, yeah. it was a difficult decision to mm-hmm. make. Absolutely. Because it took yeah. courage. But also you got backlash for that, right? From yeah. your loved ones. Yes. So, <laughs> so for you to have been in a position of making an informed decision to leave your husband mm. and now to go back back to that vomit, let's yeah. say, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. for the sake of your kids. Yeah. Like, I just don't... Like, my parents, for example, they, were, they weren't they were happily married. Like, 
Really? That's not a thing. But in the Indian culture, you just never divorce. Like, that's not... You don't right. do that. It's kind of in the African culture as well. You just stick at it, you know? Right. Right. I, I so. feel like that's <laughs> almost poisonous in some ways. Like, surely that must just eat you up inside, you know? You're with someone and you know you're not happy, but, you know, you're not going to divorce sometimes with the children or sometimes just culturally. Mm -hmm. You can't leave the person. That must feel like a really lonely place. I yeah. don't know how you would... Get past that, you mm -hmm. know? And you know what? If you're not careful, what happens is that you start to talk to other people that are in that context with you mm -hmm. about this person that you're not happy about, mm. which obviously is going to be your children, right? right? So now you're warping their version yes. or, or like their perception mm -hmm. of their dad, which I just don't think is yeah, your, it's your not, place to... It doesn't you know what healthy. I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I just haven't seen it work, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like, yeah, if you return to something like that, I feel like it can be more of a toxic environment for the children because they're going to see that you're not happy. No matter how much you hide it, 24 hours a day, you cannot hide it. It's going to show somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like for all those saying that, oh no, you need to go back, you need to put your selfish ways aside and kind of do this thing. I just feel like that's more destructive. <clears throat> I just can't see how something like that can actually work, you mm -hmm. know? For sure. And even now, like Zoe is one point, so one year, mm -hmm. so 15 months basically. Right. Um, and sometimes when I'm upset with her dad, she'll be like, to her <laughs> dad. <laughs> like showing him so much right, sass, you know? right. Like, uh -huh. what did you do to her? Like right. what happened? <laughs> and so like, I mean, she's that young and she's yeah, already feeling like she see. needs to. And that's even without you actually having said, by the way, this is what your dad did to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're not sure. even doing that. Mm -hmm. They can pick. Children are so sensitive, I feel, you know. So true. I think their innocence means that, like, they're so much more mm. drawn to understanding, like, different energies and different emotions, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, honestly, mm -hmm. they're so in tune of that. Yeah. And it's not even a thing, like, you might not have an argument with your with your husband or your ex mm. but it might just be small things in, like, he might ask you to do something and under your breath you might be like... Oh, Right. They will pick that up. Yeah, and yeah, they'll be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you find that in your relationship that you have to be very careful how you're conducting yourself when your children are in the room? Like, you have to be, like, do you like, do you ever have arguments in front of them? Not on purpose, not like big blowouts, but like little things, like, ugh, like the rolling of the eyes. Or do you are you able to control <laughs> that? I no. Do you know what? Yeah. Is, I couldn't. We're getting uh, honest now. <laughs> do you know they say that you're either a rhino or a what do they say? I've never heard a this. Hedgehog. <laughs> I've never heard that. So you either in a in a time of like conflict, you're mm -hmm. either a rhino where you're like bursting with like your anger, mm -hmm. or you might just be a hedgehog and you just like shell off a little bit, you know, like you just oh. hide in the corner. So in a time of like conflict between Leslie and I, mm -hmm. Leslie's my husband. Yeah. Um, I'm usually the one that I'm like, nah, 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 give him the chat. And mm. he's usually like, listen, just relax. You really? Know, just calm down. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, so like, when we would argue or we'd have some kind of like mm -hmm. misunderstanding or disagreement yeah. before, it used to be like, how can you, no, no, no. Yeah. But as I noticed that Zuri was responding to that, I had mm. to then like tune myself. Right. And so now we have this thing where we're like, astronaut, astronaut. Mm. And so whenever something happens and I want to tell him a little something about himself. Really? Okay, you I'm say like, astronaut, ast astronaut. Really? So you have like, <laughs> astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Really? So you have like a code word? Yeah. Before it used to be bananas. And then she started to go. Nah, 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 and I'm oh. Like, oh. <laughs> we'll change it to astronaut now. Oh. Oh, that's really smart. I never thought of something like that. Mm, I had to do that because I was correcting him in certain like parenting styles because we've got different parenting styles mm -hmm. and we're trying to merge it. Right. Um, and so in the time that something happens, mm. I'm then like, no, I don't like how you're doing that because this is what happens. And so in, instead of like undermining him in yeah. front of Zuri mm -hmm. or Zaven, but Zaven's like a baby still. Mm -hmm. Um I'm like, astronaut. Mm. <laughs> we will talk about this later. Right. <laughs> so how, how long have you been married for? Five years. We just celebrated our fifth. Really? Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the period of adjustment been like for you from being single to being married? And obviously you're different cultures, right? Mm -hmm. So how, does the, how did you manage to fuse that together? Do you know what? Honestly, I had to make peace that I'm going to lose certain people on the way. And that's 
what happened. I've really? lost. Yeah. Um, Why? Tell me. Sometimes Indians, let me just put it, I don't want to generalize them, obviously, okay. but uh, sometimes they just think that they're, they're the best, basically, that everyone mm-hmm. else is underneath them. Mm-hmm. So when it came to me marrying Leslie now, mm-hmm. it was like... Because he's, where's he from? <coughs> is he, gone he's gone in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm Indian. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so when it, come, when it came to marrying Leslie now, it was like contention, but not at first. Mm-hmm. It happened slowly. Um, right. So yeah, the merging of the two hasn't been easy. But like I say, like you're, you have to be committed to growing. Mm-hmm. Like if you make a decision that you're gonna like be the end of whatever pattern it is that you've yeah. seen in your family, like you have to be, you have mm-hmm. to see it through. Yeah, like be it like thunderstorms. You have to see it through. Now you you've know? really piqued my interest. So what <coughs> happened? So you brought him home, and then your family was like, no, or what happened? So we wanted to get married within like six months of knowing each other. What? Well, do you know what? Engaged at five, <laughs> five months and married what? at six. Yeah. That's super fast. <laughs> yeah. What kind of connection did you have? <laughs> I just knew he was the one. You know when people say like, oh, you'll know it. Like you'll feel it when he's the one. Right. Like it was, it was that. Like I really felt like he was the one for me. Um, be it the challenges that would come with it. Um, so, but did you know him through somewhere else or was he a random stranger? No, I met him at Cambridge University, actually. We both... Went there and he was late. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm the only like Indian person here. Like everyone mm-hmm. else is white. Like how am I going to have difficult? Because I was right. learning, I was um, doing theology. Right. So I was like, how are we going to have difficult conversations around faith and our identity mm. and that mm. around privileged people? Like we don't share the same story. Right, right. So then Leslie walked through the room and I was like, hi. <laughs> 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 and right. so I was like, hi. <laughs> um, so then that's how we. But you budded. knew, you're saying you knew after six months mm-hmm. or even before that. Because, <clears throat> you know, we, we both have a faith orientation. So we're both Christians. Mm-hmm. So we prayed and we, and I wasn't getting dreams at the time. And he was like such a dreamer. Um, and so he had a dream once that mm-hmm. his friend was like, listen, she's a diamond. She's a queen. You better take care of her. Mm-hmm. And this other friend in the dream was like, oh, this is Leslie. Like, come on, you know, he's going to take care of her. So that was the dream. And he wrote it down. The next day we go to gym now and mm-hmm. I'm doing my biceps looking all cute. Looking <laughs> <laughs> like doing my 1.5 uh-huh. kg. On my- <laughs> Shed. Thinking, <laughs> that, yeah, thinking that I'm like doing some real heavy weights. Uh-huh. <laughs> And then this guy I could see from my peripheral wish, vision that like he was looking at me and coming over and I was like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And he goes, he's like at the top of his voice, he's like, you know, you're a diamond. You're a queen. Is that your boyfriend? And at the uh-huh. time he wasn't. I was like, yeah. And like he was shouting to the point where you people actually yeah. stopped. But he was like shouting to the point where people actually stopped working out because they were like, huh? is she okay? Is this right. man going to like beat her up or something? He was like shouting and pointing like, <laughs> like wow. crazy. And then... um. He was like, oh, he better know you're a queen, you're a diamond. Like, he better take care of you. Huh? And so I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And I went to where Leslie was and I was like, can we go? Like, yeah. it's a lot. Um, and then the guys that stopped their workouts, they went to the same place that I went to where Leslie was. And mm. they were like, is she okay? <laughs> she yeah. just got shouted at. Yeah, yeah. And then he showed me the dream and then we started praying about it, fasting about it. And then long story short. So the dream actually came true. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we both had the same dream that we were going to get married in a month. And we were both like, Mm because we're still students, we're like, how are we going to pay for a wedding? (laughs) So hold on. So you had known each other for how long? And you were having talks about getting married? I think like three months. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is wild. (laughs) What? No. So your family must have been like, nah. Yeah. They were like, that's not happening. Because culturally... So everyone in your family ma- marries another Indian person. Mm-hmm. Is that predominantly what had been yeah. happening? Mm-hmm. So you came to break that chain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was that backlash like? That must have been really tough. And especially to so make... quick. Mm, that's what they were worried about. They were like, and you know what? They have this perception that like a black man will leave you. Like he'll mm. just, he'll marry you, but it won't mean anything to him. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. he'll just leave you. Right. Like, you can't be happily married or you can't be happy in a relationship with a black man. Like, Mm. never. Do you know what? It's that kind of mentality. Right. So um, I just had to be like, do you know what? I'm trusting the Lord in this. Like, Mm. I'm not... I'm not even putting my trust in Leslie. I mean, I love him, but yeah. like, I'm not putting my trust in him. He's he's man at the end. Yeah, of, like, yeah, he's yeah. just he a man at the end you. of the day. Yeah, yeah mm. as in human. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were like, are you sure? 
And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm very sure I'm, I'm going to do it, basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Just I had to make I had to make it clear though that like I wasn't gonna follow anyone's instructions but what I sensed the Lord was telling me. Do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So. Wow, <laughs> no, that's really interesting because for you to go against the great, I mean, I don't know, I don't know a lot of Indian people, but from what I've seen of them, they're very like this is how we do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So were you disowned by anybody? Yeah, I would I would say, but not straight away. Mm-mm. Not so, oh. so my dad, my dad, bless him. He like walked me down the aisle, but he was like, <laughs> <laughs> holding you back, right? Yeah, I was like, Dad, we're supposed to be walking yeah, forward, but right? he's like really slow at walking towards Leslie, and I could tell like mm, there's a bit of yeah. tension there. Um, and then I think I moved to Ghana is when people were like, Damn, she really married a black man. Like, she really did that. Do you know what I mean? And then to move to Ghana on top. Yeah. So, like, our relationships, yeah, my fa- my relationship with my family is not really on good terms. Mm. Mm. That's, that must be really hard for you. Do you know what? It was something that I had to make peace with. And mm. I, like, cried. Like, there was no tomorrow yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, I bet. Um, but I think I saw it coming. And mm. so it was a little bit easier. Not not that it was easy at all, but it was yeah. easier because I had seen it coming. Like mm. our relationship wasn't the best anyway. Right, do you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So I guess it was easier for them to let go of me as well because mm. it was like, we're not close anyway. Right, right. Um, because I gave my life to Christ from Hinduism. So I already broke some chains so, already. Do you know what? Like so I, you yeah. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like already been like showed them that like you were already uh, against the grain. Yeah. If you want to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of felt like I needed to follow my own mm-hmm. like do you know what I mean? I yeah. just needed to You needed your own path. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Mm. Um, and that looked like that. Basically. Wow. So yeah. why why did you move to Ghana? I mean, oh gosh, I'm crossing lines here because this is like an interview <laughs> that's not supposed to be for the podcast. But so, okay, so you moved to Ghana together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A conscious decision to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did that affect the dynamics of your families and stuff like that in your relationship? That's what I'm saying. Like, as soon as I made that decision to move here, mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, she really married a black man. Like, now we really know that. We feel that. Do you know what I mean? Um. So, um, and the worst thing, like the, the, not the worst, but the funniest thing is that it was my decision, like that I wanted to move to Ghana and he was like, yeah. no way. Yeah. He was like, no way. We're not doing that. And like, obviously we're married. So where you go, I'm going to go. Right. So we're not doing that. And I was like, no, we are. We have to. Why? <laughs> Why Ghana though? Why was that for you? I don't know. It was crazy because I knew that there was something coming, like mm. something was around the corner because I was at a job that I didn't like and I was really mm. praying like, what's next? Because I hate this stuff. Do you know mm. what I mean? Um, and we were living in Highgate. I don't know if you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like <laughs> people, like maybe like three generations ago, they owned slaves. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And so being in an area like that, having a job where I'm teaching the kids, mm. it was like, I just wasn't, they just didn't like me or Leslie. Do you know what I mean? And so we were kind of like, what's next? What's next? Right. And all of a sudden I started seeing videos of like Ghana and really? day in the life of Ghana. Oh. And I was like, I want to make soup like that. I want to make <laughs> soup like that. <laughs> wow. So I was like, Leslie, I think Ghana is the next thing for us. And he was like, no. And I feel like just moving here and raising our kids here was the best um, hmm. decision we could make for them. Do yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Um, and now being here, I can see that like the work-life balance alone is mm. like something that will keep me here. Right. Because I remember just working so hard, like day and I night, know, day and night. I know, I know, right? Even when it comes to like a day off, you're still mm. thinking about work because yeah. you've got some kind of deadline to meet or whatever. Yeah. But here it's like more life happens than work. Mm. And I like that, mm. you know. So do you feel like it's made a difference to your relationship, the fact that you've moved here? Has it made you stronger Definitely. Really? We've had to walk through some like real tough things here. Because mm. you know you have to just like become an adult here. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, no yeah, yeah. there's no there's no safety net. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, there's no like government stuff that you can tap into here. Mm. It's like you either, you know, make it work or you or, yeah. on the streets beg for bread, basically. Yeah, if yeah, it doesn't yeah. if you don't have much like do you know what? Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So um me and him had to like work through a lot of stuff together, you know. Mm. Um so how did you get over those cultural barriers? Between the two of you? 
That's what I mean. Like, because we both come from the same faith and like we both really believe in what we believe in, mm. it was like our foundations were more on that than what my heritage says or what his mm. heritage says. Do you know what I mean? That's why, like, even at our wedding, we decided that we're not going to do something that's like, um, that's like leaning towards any of our cultures. Do you know mm. what I mean? So mm. we just done a basic wedding. Like, he wore jeans, I wore a skirt. Really? Like yeah. a crop top. <laughs> We did. We just like, we're just like, we're going to just make this day about like marriage as mm -hmm. opposed to just a wedding. Like. That's very, very important. I feel like a lot of the time when people think about, you know, getting married or whatever, they focus so much on the one day. But what happens to all the rest of it? Because that one day is doesn't last forever, right? There is so much more to it. So I like the fact that you said he turned up in jeans. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Because honestly. that then takes away all the pressure of the wedding day mm -hmm. and gives you time to actually reflect on what's going to happen after that. Yeah, for sure. And we had like marriage prep as well that we mm. were like going to mm. where our pastor was talking for hours on end mm. <laughs> about what marriage consists of and stuff. Um And then, yeah, we just, like, turned up on the... We even went to, like, Nando's to celebrate after. Did like, you? with our families. We were just like, let's just have some Nando's. Nando's bangs, like. <laughs> so um, it was so completely yeah. different, completely out of oh, the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Did you ever, at any point, think that you should perhaps get a prenup before you get married? That's a... Um, what is that again? It's the... When you agree so, to... Yeah, so like then your assets are yours before you get married. So if anything was to happen, you your assets are kind of protected. Yeah, no, I didn't, you know. And do you know why? why? I don't even think he did because we ne we didn't have assets. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're both students. What do we own? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't have anything. <laughs> Take it, you know? <laughs> Take the £50 yeah, I have. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so yeah, I had like student loans. I mean, I'm really not going to try and protect some student loans. Mm. Um, but no, we were like, we were both starting from zero. So we knew that we were going to build together, you mm, know? Mm. Um, and that's something I really like about our relationship where yeah. it's like I we he never met me when I was like made yeah and I've never you know so mm. we both kind of had this agreement that we're just gonna just gonna go through life together and let mm. it you know mm. see mm. this one out basically wow. <laughs> so um on a previous show I was talking to someone about prenups <laughs> and there was and we had a similar type of conversation And then he said to me, so what if you don't have anything tangible in terms of money or property or anything like that, but you have an idea mm -hmm. and this idea might be worth money. Mm -hmm. So would it, would it be in your interest to have a prenup to protect your idea in a marriage? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, why not mm -hmm. type thing. And then he was like, so what if later on, like the idea blows up and now the idea that you had is worth, I don't know, a billion dollars or whatever, mm. and something happens in your relationship, should you then split that? Is that something that should be split or is that part of the prenup and mm -hmm. it belongs to the person whose idea it was? Mm. Wow, how interesting. Isn't I it? know. <laughs> But my thing is like, okay, you obviously get paid in terms of value, right? Mm. So like if you're working for someone, it's right. because you're bringing them value mm -hmm. that you're getting paid for it, right? right? You're not just getting paid for sitting there and existing. Mm. So I guess in a situation like that, your mm. spouse, when things were well, mm. like I'm sure she or he were, was helping you mm -hmm. or, or bringing some kind of value, right? They weren't right. just like, yeah, they weren't just outside of mm. the idea. Do you know what I mean? Right. So just because I, th well, this is just my opinion. Obviously. Yeah, no, that's um, what you're here for. It's your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, I guess it's like, maybe it was your idea, but recognize that that person did actually bring you mm. value, you know? Mm. But another thing about prenups, I just feel like having something like that in mind, you've already made the assumption that there's a way out. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes- That's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like in marriage we're looking for perfection like we're looking mm -hmm. for it's never supposed to be a selfish thing mm -hmm. so marriage is always supposed to show you you're ugly like do you know yeah, what I mean like yeah, yeah. that stuff that you do is ugly like mm -hmm. when you're angry and you burst yeah it's it's ugly mm -hmm. do you know what I mean mm -hmm. um and so sometimes I feel like we have this warped version of like what marriage should be and it's like a selfish thing like what can I get out mm. of this um and so that's why something like marrying a narcissistic or or dealing with a narcissistic yeah. in a marriage mm -hmm. is difficult yes because it's like 
you're so selfish. Yeah. Like all you could see is yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's not supposed to be what yeah. marriage is supposed to be like. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's just the institution of marriage. Like being married is supposed to show us um, the idea of gospel. Not that I want to get into faith or anything mm -hmm. like that. But like the gospel is supposed to be shown into mm -hmm. or through the institution of marriage. And mm -hmm. if it's not doing that, something's, something's mm -hmm. up basically, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. I say all of that to say like a prenup is just kind of saying, hmm. I'm like 90% about you. 10% mm. <laughs> of me is you like, think so? maybe I do. I do. Just because it's so easy when it's like, when, you, when you're going through a, a, something like that's bringing tension in a marriage, it's so mm -hmm. easy to say like, oh, I just want a way out now. Like I'm, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Just because yeah. the emotions are so heightened. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that that's something that... You, no, 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 no. I'm it, just saying in general. Me like no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not no. that easily offended. Yeah, no, don't sure. talk. No, no, no. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not saying. Yeah, so w what I am saying is like just prenups is, is that kind of like. So the best wedding advice, uh, the best marriage advice, sorry, that we mm. got was that when you get married, you've got to imagine yourself getting into this house and all the windows and doors are blocked, mm -hmm. that you just have to work things out, wriggle out of it as soon as you can with each other, you know? Mm. Um, and it's not to say sometimes I haven't entertained the idea of leaving because I'm just so angry mm, at this person. Mm, like, mm. how could you not take me on a date? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like, mm -hmm. he didn't take me on a date and I want to like, leave yeah. Do you know what I mean it's just simply because of I'm entertaining emotions mm -hmm. at that time um and so sometimes we could do like a, a um a premature kind of response to something like that with mm -hmm. a divorce do you, do you know what I mean and yeah. then there's some serious situations that happen and you mm -hmm. need to get divorced but do you um, not feel that there are situations where you you the woman needs to be told you need to leave oh yeah I wish my mom was told that Really? I wish my mom was told that. I mean, I was telling her that. <laughs> really? I was the one who's like, I can take you to the lawyers if you want. <laughs> really? That's um, so interesting. Yeah, I do. I do feel like sometimes women need to be like, do you know what? Mm. Wake up, sis. Yeah. Like, <laughs> something's up. Yeah, you need to um, leave. But then your, yeah. uh, your, the, the um, situation that you just gave about, you know, being in a house and having all the doors and windows closed. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you visualize that, then you're almost trapped as well. Mm. Uh, fair enough. Because to walk to walk away, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's not the easy thing to do, actually, because of all the ridicule you'll get, mm -hmm. all the judgment that you get. It's mm -hmm. really not an easy choice. I feel like for if you've been in a relationship, especially for a long time, for yeah. a woman to get to that point, it must be something. Yeah, for sure. But that's if you're a rational thinker. Mm. I'm not. I'm right. very irrational when it comes to any issues yeah. like something happens and I, <laughs> I take it yeah I take it to the heights of highs mm -hmm. where like the world is like coming to an end you right. know because I felt like you needed to take me out on a date that day and, you, mm -hmm. and we didn't make time for it how dare you <laughs> do you know what I mean so some people yeah. are like really rational thinkers and some people are rational that's what I mean like mm. if you are that person that like gets to those heights mm. of emotions and sometimes when I'm in that place my tongue is just like loose yeah. I'm yeah. saying all sorts of things mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Um, now, like the ghetto is coming out of me because yeah. I'm like, no, we're about to fight, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think for people like myself, mm. that advice just went a long way because it was mm. like, come on, right? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, that yeah. deep. But mm -hmm. if you are in a serious situation where, like, you know, the guy is abusing you, mm. you need to get out. Yeah, yeah. Like th that. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely a, mm. a a moment where you get the keys and open the door and be like, mm. right, babe, mm. peace out. You yeah. Know? So let me ask you this. Did you, when you were getting married, did you did the thought ever entertain you that this may not work and there could possibly be an instance where we could get divorced? Did that ever come to your mind, ever? No. Not when I was getting married, no. Mm. Is that what you mean, when I was getting married? Yeah. No. And that's something that we were told from early, like, you can't just entertain that thought like it's willy-nilly, mm -hmm. like... Mm -hmm. There are there are two situations that can occur mm -hmm. when you can entertain that, yeah. and that's if it's abusive mm -hmm. or if he's cheating, mm -hmm. and that's like the only time that you can, you know. And yeah. other than that, like things, you you can sort things out, like okay. you know. So, did you ever look at your marriage as being a, a contract that you're signing a contract? Not a contract, a vow, a promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a vow. Mm. 
Yeah. So would you Not ever contract. would you ever do a marriage where you didn't have to legally sign and it was just before God? Would you consider that a marriage still? Yeah, I will still consider it. Mm. I think that's more important than the papers. The papers yeah. are simply just to prove that, like, I need to get certain things done, you know, like mm. changing my name, etc. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited to change my name, by the way. <laughs> as you can imagine, Cooper Patel was like the, oh. the Amy <laughs> Smith. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right, like, right, right. I was found everywhere and anywhere. So I was like, yes, to some like unique oh, name. Right, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. But no, I was still. Yeah. I consider more, like, I consider, I mm-hmm. consider it more um, a marriage mm-hmm. in terms of like making vows or yeah. like, taking vows mm-hmm. than to sign the contract. Mm. Yeah. The reason I ask you is because for me, when I got married, at no point did I ever entertain the fact that one day you could get divorced or one day you'd be separated. or It never crossed my mind, even for a split second. Mm. But then as things happened and I was thrown into this world and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like this is something that's happened to me that I've never thought about before. Mm. And so I felt like I was just thrown out into the wind mm. to deal with a situation that I had no clue about. Even though you hear of people getting divorced and you don't, I didn't I never processed it, mm. you know? So I was just like, this is completely new to me. Mm. And the reason I'm saying it is because not that I would say to everybody that's getting married, oh, think about just in case you got divorced. But I feel like there needs to be an element before you get married to understand that there is a doorway that it could happen for whatever reason. Not that you're hoping that it will happen or that you think it will happen, but mm. to just be, have a well-rounded <laughs> picture of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, it's nice to go into marriage and just think about marriage and think about all the lovely things. But sometimes there are things where it, you can go down a path that you didn't expect. Mm-hmm. You could get married and your partner does become abusive. Mm-hmm. Now, perhaps you've never thought about mm-hmm. if I need to escape. You've never thought about... Maybe I need to do this or put, do you, do you know mm. what I mean? I know it's a very difficult, it's really hard for me to explain what I'm, say, I'm saying because I'm not trying to encourage and say, think about divorce before you get married. I'm not trying to say that, mm. but I just feel like in order to have a balanced view of things, that's something that is at the back of your mind somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, you mm-hmm. know, it's something that can happen. And I think to be mentally prepared, you need to look at the whole picture. The set, I gave an example last time and I said that, when you um, buy your house, you know, you don't think that my house is going to burn down, but you still buy the insurance mm. because anything can happen. That not mean I'm hoping my house will burn down. Mm. I'm praying that it won't. Mm. But, you know, it's like a backup. Mm. Almost. I don't know if I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm not making myself very clear. But I just feel like it should be part of the whole process of getting married you should mm-hmm. think about these things mm-hmm. you know I think I will tell Zari that's my daughter I think I will tell her when she gets married that mm-hmm. like in those two occasions you yeah you got you got to consider right that. exactly so maybe you need to attach it to something yeah so that it's not an option to say oh I'm just gonna get divorced because I'm angry because you're something. not rationally yeah, thinking yeah 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 but yeah I think for certain instances I think that's great how you've put it actually certain instances you're like don't just gotta you, get out. Yeah, you have to go. Yeah. You have to go. And I feel like that's something that perhaps needs to be spoken about a bit yeah, more. Yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent. Because you know what? In in relationships like that, because I've been in a relationship like that um before Leslie, mm. where I didn't even know it was abusive. It wasn't physically abusive, but it was um mm. mentally and emotionally abusive. Right. More so emotionally mm-hmm, abusive. Mm-hmm. Um and I just didn't have the um the knowledge, but also just the vocabulary to even know that like this guy is right. This guy's a joker. Do you know what I mean? I, like I just didn't have it, even the vocabulary to right. know that I'm going through what I'm going mm-hmm. through because he was so narcissistic, right? So into himself and like mm-hmm. he could just never do anything wrong. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And mm-hmm. even stuff like that, like it, it doesn't need to be physically abusive. Yes. It could be that mm-hmm. emotional, um, yeah, mental, whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, if Zuri was to get married at some point in her life. Mm-hmm or when, mm-hmm. um, I would definitely tell her, like, just to educate her. Right. I just feel like it's the my education mom's... part of it. Mm, and then I, I feel I like those are almost closed doors. And so you feel like to be the first one to open it can be really difficult. Mm, you know, these I'm, are I'm tough. Sure. These are tough conversations, but these are part of the realities of marriage that I feel like sometimes you need to just, mm. you need to think about, you need to process the whole thing. It's like I keep saying it. 
that your marriage is not the wedding day. Mm. There's so much more to it. Like marriage will teach you things about yourself that you didn't even know. You can say that it again will for the bend you. Yeah, oh, honestly, <laughs> like it will bend you backwards <laughs> and show <laughs> you your ugly side. <laughs> for real, you know, it will teach you stuff. Yeah, but I feel like people get into marriage because they feel like it's all flowers and roses, and that's not the reality of marriage. No. It's hard. Honestly, hard work. It's work. Mm. (laughs) It's work. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think humility is like a huge thing that I would say if anyone's watching, like Mm. to really look out for, and not someone that says I'm humble because you've already described yourself exactly. Um, Mm -hmm. But someone that's like willing to see and hear your your side of his version of ugly. Mm -hmm. You know Mm -hmm. the things that you're not very comfortable with. Yeah. Because I feel like. Honestly, like once marriage happens, like instantly you see the ugly and you're yeah. like, actually, that yeah. bit of you, I really don't like. like let's work at that. Yeah, you know? it's very true. One of the things that I noticed about myself when I got married is that I don't like to apologize. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but. Yeah, I'm just like, you, <laughs> you're, well, that's, you're, you're a step ahead of me. I'm just like, I ain't saying it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I found it so hard. But that mm. is because when I was growing up, I never really apologized. I never did. And I never no I never one... noticed it. I guess I was never really pulled up on it. Mm. So I, I went into marriage with that and I was just like, I just oh I don't want to <laughs> apologize. You apologize or you say it first. You know? And so I that was one of the things that I took into marriage which was not good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even throughout my separation, I see things that I did that were not good. That's I, good. Do you, I know, like you that. know, I have to I have to you, blame is not yeah, yeah blame is not one sided right blame goes both ways and i see the things that i've done mm. but i'm grateful that i'm able to see that because i feel like the next relationship that i get into i can already see my flaws mm, so i so feel good. like i'm already a step ahead mm. you know so good so good no i noticed that about myself as well mm-hmm. i was like i'm sorry but and this whole thing of like women are always right that's mm-hmm. something i took in as i was like do you know that i'm a woman yeah i, I know like, like yeah. right. don't you, don't you educate yourself <laughs> I know. yeah right exactly yeah. but no that's so true like now that you see yourself and i love that mm. you can acknowledge that yeah, because sometimes absolutely. people can so mm. easily be like do you know like what i've been through yeah not seeing that like you're also part of that story exactly as well, exactly. You know? was, exactly like i would never I would never want to portray on camera that I feel like I'm 100% in the right. I didn't mm. do anything. Mm. I would never want to. Because it's not reality. Let's be real. Mm. Okay. It takes two to make a marriage work. And sometimes there is blame on both both sides. And mm. so we have to admit that. And I think that's yeah. goes away, you know. Mm, for sure. Mm. And that thing about um, what you said about like getting married and then seeing that the person then becomes abusive mm. like that's something that we I, I would definitely be educating Zuri on as well mm. because it's true very at first important. it might just be like because oh, you may not so even lovely. notice it mm-hmm. it can be very subtle and before you know it you've you're so far down I always say to people that I can I can understand how people can be in abusive relationships and mm. still stay mm. because it doesn't happen <laughs> overnight mm. it will creep slowly Mm. and before you know it you're in a hole that you don't know how you got there Mm. and that's why it's so key to like teach our young girls I don't do you Mm -hmm. know you you have a daughter right yes Mm -hmm. um it's so important to teach our young girls that like Mm -hmm. this is your value and if you're treated Mm -hmm. anything Mm -hmm. but like you know if you're treated like anything but this then you need to pull it up Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and I think that's the role of a father as well like exactly with Lizzie Absolutely. sometimes he's like give me a kiss Zuri and Zuri doesn't want to give it and then mm-hmm. he's like oh no worries I'm like no chase her <laughs> like show her her value like mm-hmm. she should be chased like she's what you know yeah yeah so stuff like that like um mm-hmm. it's so important to educate our, our daughters you know it really of, like, is because without thing exactly because without stuff like that how do you grow from it how mm. do you how does the knowledge get better over the years mm. if you didn't have something to start with you have mm. to start with a seed it has to grow right yeah for sure like so, that. Yeah, you know. for sure. Mm. So for sure. tell me, what's just before we like wrap up, what's one piece of advice you'd give to someone who is going into a marriage fresh and doesn't have a clue, just is thinking about butterflies in their stomach? You're <laughs> about to be hit some real reality <laughs> serious. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Don't do that. Mm. I would say the 
the best thing that Leslie and I done was to get um, pre-marital counseling mm. because it was like certain conversations like what do you think is a, a role of a woman is mm. because it's what he was taught by his mum that he's now going to carry into marriage mm-hmm. and, like and so if the mum has been doing everything for him and expects that I, right mm-hmm. can we do it <laughs> we're not uh, doing that <laughs> right um mm. So stuff like that, like even the, just small things that you wouldn't ever talk about because you're just so in the emotion of like, mm. this is so mushy cushy, you know, yeah, like I'm yeah. so in love. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like premarital counseling really helped us to even identify what we're like in times of conflict. Mm. Like, okay, are you a rhino or a hedgehog? Like yeah. I said, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. And like conversations like, okay, what did you, what do you think you've picked up from your parents that mm. you don't want to see in our marriage? Right. For me, it was like walking away. Mm. My dad, anytime like anything happened, he'll be like storming off. Mm. And that's something I took on. I'm like, oh, let's see. And I'll storm off. You right. know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and for him, it was like pride, like mm. this apology thing, like, right. am I really wrong? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so stuff like that we were able to identify and then that way mm. you're held accountable before you even sign anything yeah. or make any vows you know mm. so my greatest advice would be to have premarital counseling mm. for sure from mm. like someone that you trust and someone yeah. you look up to you yeah know? yeah absolutely I did you have great. did you have i did like actually that? i did yeah. I did, How did you find that? it was very eye-opening mm-hmm. but i always say that i feel for me personally i got married too young and so probably some of the things that should have been picked up wasn't picked up. Mm. And I was quite headstrong as well. So I was like, I'm doing this and no one can tell me anything, you know? (laughs) So, you know, another little flaw there for you. (laughs) (laughs) So it was kind of like that. But yeah, I think pre-marital counselling is definitely, definitely very good to have. Yeah. Yeah, for Mm. sure. But yeah. But thank you so much for coming on and talking to today. It's, it's been very privilege. enlightening. Thank it's you. been so interesting to hear about the cultural differences and how you overcame them. So, yeah, that was really <laughs> Glad nice. to be here. Thank <laughs> you so much. But you have a YouTube channel, right? I do. What's your YouTube channel name? Krupa Brokwa. Okay. All right. That was <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I make face-based content. <laughs> Krupa a brokwa or a barakawa, as my family say. I'm like, is it really that hard? A brokwa, but yeah, we're putting that on screen for you so you can check her out. No, but thank you so much. No worries at all. Thank you, (laughs) guys. That is the end of today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I definitely have. Um, If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to also like, comment, and share this video. Until next time. We are out. Nutty Fafa.